Hey, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything, and today I'm gonna to show you how I messed up my table saw top and how easy it's gonna to be to fix it. Check it out. So I don't exactly have footage of me discovering my table saw in this condition, but I can give you a dramatic reenactment of what happened. I had put this piece of pink foam on the table because I was gonna do some plywood cutting on it, not realizing that I had left this outside and it must have had some condensation underneath it. So when I picked it up, I saw this. All this surface rust on my table saw top. Now this is a cast iron table, and while it was pretty jarring when I first saw it, it's a very easy fix. So let me show you how I'm gonna do it. So the process of breaking up the rust that's on this cast iron table and getting it off of there is gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna be using the, the original, original WD-40 formula that everybody has in their home garage. And I'm basically gonna be spraying that on there to break up that rust. Then I'm gonna be using a scotch pad and some paper towels to get it off there. And you'll be shocked in how nice this thing looks when I'm done. Now, if you wanted to be really careful of your wood outfeed table, you could put some tape out there. You can see there's some kind of hazing around the end of mine because I've actually had to do this a few times. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray some of the original WD-40 product on the table. We're gonna let that soak in for a little bit. And then we're gonna use a surface conditioning pad, commonly known as a Scotch-Brite pad, to rub this stuff in and allow the WD-40 product to break up the rust on the table and try to break that bond the rust has between itself and the metal. Now I also have some in my T-Track, so I'm gonna spray it in there. And I'm being pretty liberal with this stuff. This can in particular has the built-in smart straw, which allows you to never lose the straw and spray in two different ways. It helps me get inside the T-tracks and any other hard to reach areas. Now I'm wearing rubber gloves from this because I don't really want to get any of that rust all over my skin. And I'm using a green scuffing pad. So now that I've got it all soaked down, I've let it soak for a little while. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use the scotch pad to go with the grain of the metal, try to get rid of some of this rust. And I'll warn you, this is gonna look worse before it looks better. So now that I sprayed this down and I scrubbed with the Scotch pad the first time, I wanna get all this residue off the table. To do that, I'm gonna spray it down with some degreaser and then I'm gonna wipe it off with some paper towels. Now it's important to get as much of the product off as you can in between steps so that you're not kind of cross contaminating your scotch pad in between. You can see even on that first pass, just a real light and quick cleanup. I've already made a lot of progress, gotten a lot of that surface rust off. We're gonna keep going and bring this thing up to its former glory, make it look brand new again and condition it so it's gonna work really well and really resist rusting in the future. So again, I soaked it down with some of the original WD-40 product. Now I'm gonna be scuffing it again, trying to break up some more of that rust. Now again, just clean it off with some degreaser. So it's already looking really good with the two applications and the hand scrubbing with the scotch pad. And if you have an orbital sander, what you can do is kind of fold the pad in half and then take your orbital with some light pressure and it'll kind of help get out whatever scratches and scuffs and rust pits might still be in there. And then we're gonna take it one step further with my actual sander and some light sandpaper. So the goal here is to not actually really remove any material. This is a milled and kind of precision surface but we do wanna make sure we get any of the rust we can off of this thing. 
and also inside the T-Track. In my case, I kind of have to pull in one direction because my T-Track doesn't line up great with my table, but I want to make sure I get as much rust out of there as I can so it doesn't inhibit any of my T-Track tools like my miter gauge and stuff like that. Just continuing to work over this thing, try to get any of those high spots out. So now you could definitely stop here, but I like to go one step further and actually use my orbital sander with a 320 grit pad, really sand this thing out perfectly smooth. Then we're gonna put a coating of wax on it to make it really slick and repel some water so it doesn't rust up again. So now that I kind of polished it with the sander, I'm gonna give it one last push with the scotch pad in the direction of the grain to get it nice and smooth, get anything that might be lingering in there out. And a quick wipe down with the degreaser. We want the surface to be really clean before the last step. So we got all that dirt off of there. Okay, so the last step is gonna to be to apply some paste finishing wax. Now this is kind of one of my favorite ways to top off a machine, especially a cast iron machine. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna protect the actual finish from water, it's gonna make it kind of hydrophobic, and it's also gonna provide a really slick material that your wood, or whatever you're passing over your table saw is gonna to want to skate across. And we're gonna put it on kind of heavy with like a paper towel pad. We're gonna wipe it on, and then essentially once we've got the whole thing covered, we're gonna wipe it basically back off, and it's gonna create a really, really slick surface it's gonna protect the saw and it's gonna make the wood literally just skate across it. Now be careful when you're doing this. Obviously I probably should have taken the blade off of my saw, but just be mindful of it. Don't get yourself cut. So I put this stuff on pretty heavy and then I wipe it off. So you can probably see there's like a haze across the whole saw. Now I'll grab a fresh piece of paper towel that doesn't have any additional wax on it and I'll buff it in kind of a forward and backwards motion and this thing will be slick. And it gives you some resistance when you first get started and then as it breaks in it becomes really really slippery. That's how you know you're done in that area. Get a little bit of paste wax inside those T-track grooves as well. Okay, check this out. Look at how that piece of wood literally just skates across the table saw top. There's no resistance on it whatsoever, which is just gonna make pushing material through the saw that much easier. You can even take your insert, throw a little bit of paste wax on there too, just so that that's nice and slick. Everything's gonna be moving really, really well. We've got no more rust on the table saw top, and this thing is looking great. Ready to go back to work. All right, that about does it for this little video. This is a really simple process, and you can do this on any of your tools. I've done this on bandsaw tops, I've done it on planer tops. The wax as the last step is really like a great finish, because if you're working on a planer, a joiner, anything where you have like a lot of resistance on the wood, Using the paste wax will make it glide that much better. Now, like I mentioned, I'm using the original WD-40 product on this. And, and thank you to WD-40 Rare for sponsoring this video. Um, this is stuff that I use in the shop all the time over a variety of different things, but it does a really great job breaking up that rust and helping break the bond between the rust and the substrate. So grab this out of your dad's garage and use it to fix your tools. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you want to see more videos in my shop, more videos like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave this video a comment if this was helpful, if you have any other tips and tricks on how to save a table saw like this. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop over on Instagram and Facebook. I'm always posting what I have going on behind the scenes, and we've got a bunch of really cool woodworking projects and metalworking projects coming up. That's why I had the uh, 
foam on the table saw to begin with. So also don't leave a wet piece of foam on any of your expensive tools. I think that should be the main takeaway of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.